Now I've reviewed some frankly stunning affordable smartphones over the last couple of months, topped off in style of course by the Poco X3 NFC from Xiaomi. But just as you might have thought you decided on your next budget blower, along comes Realme to f*** everything up with the Realme 7 Pro. This bad boy right here boasts an OLED screen, a stereo speaker setup with full Dolby Atmos support and the Snapdragon 720G chipset which should absolutely blaze through any game out there. So what I'm going to do is whip out the Realme 7 Pro and take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect ahead of my in-depth review. And for more than the latest greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding my, my notifications bell. Christ, that sounds all kinds of wrong. Now I really, really absolutely adored the Realme 6 series smartphone so I'm really hoping they haven't buggered things up with the 7 series. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have done because Realme smartphones in general tend to offer stunning value for money. Right, you got the usual heartwarming message when you first yank that lid off. Welcome to the Realme family. Let's embrace a new journey. A journey that hopefully in 2021 will actually involve leaving the house and not being scared to mingle with other people. So what you get in the box is, of course, the phone itself. You got your Pokey pin device for getting your SIM in there. Bit of Type-C USB cable. An absolutely frickin' lootly enormous Super Dart charging plug. And may we, like pretty much all budget smartphones these days, you do get a bundled condom case in there as well. Just slap that around the 7 Pro, give it a bit of extra protection. But anyway, bugger all of that noise, let's actually check out the Realme 7 Pro itself. Now first up I've got to say I got my hands on the Realme 7 Pro before the official UK launch so I don't have the official pricing just yet but I will update the description when that is announced and Realme has promised it will be crazy low as with the Realme 6 series. Now as with most budget smartphones it is a polycarbonate back just a bit of plastic there uh, but you do have a metal frame uh, stretching right around the outer rim and as you can hopefully make out there it is a split design on the back end as well or what Realme is terming a mirror design just for a very funky aesthetic. And here at Blinds you'll be able to grab the Realme 7 Pro in this blue finish or also a sort of silver uh, finish with the exact same mirror aesthetic. Of course that plastic backing is probably going to scratch up fairly easily uh, so you'll probably want to slap that condom cover on it if you do grab your own. I'll be leaving that cover off while I'm using it for the next week or so for my full review just to see how hardy it really is. Well, the good news is though at least around the front you do have Gorilla Glass 3 to help protect that display and you've actually got pre-installed screen protector on it as well so it's a double hard bastard. And while the Realme 7 Pro isn't uh, fully water resistant of course like pretty much every other budget smartphone out there it is at least splash resistant apparently. And there's great news on the SIM card front as well because you've actually got a dual SIM tray right here and you've also got a separate slot for your micro SD memory cards so you can expand the memory up to a further 256 gigs on top of the 128 gigs of built-in storage. Okay my SIM card is inside let's get the Realme 7 Pro all set up and then I'll take you on a tour of all the good stuff. All right, so the Realme 7 Pro is all set up and good for action. Now, first of all, on the software front, it looks like a fairly stock version of Android. It's actually Android 10 with Realme UI 1.0 slathered on top. A Realme UI, for those who don't know it, it's basically very heavily based on Color OS. So if you dive into the settings, you will notice it's a little bit clunky. There is so much stuff packed in here. Finding what you actually need can be a bit of a struggle. On the flip side of that, you've got loads of great additional stuff crammed in here that you don't get on standard Android, such as, uh, for instance, the game space. This can just help to boost the performance of your games when needed and adds a whole bunch of other features including notifications blocking and the like. We've also got some very useful one-handed help as well. You can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on the screen and you've also actually got a dedicated uh, one-handed mode as well so you can shrink that screen when you needed to. Uh, very handy if you're trying to play around with your apps one-handed. Although to be fair the Realme 7 Pro isn't exactly an absolute monster. It's a 6.4 incher which is actually fairly restrained compared with some 6.7, 6.8 inch beasts that you get around this price. Point. Now I've definitely got to turn our attention to the actual display as well because unlike pretty much any other smartphones around this budget price point it is OLED tech as you can probably tell from the slight flickering uh, there on the screen. I can't actually see that flickering in real life it's only when it's on the camera. Now OLED tech has a few advantages over IPS. Uh, one of the advantages is you can actually get an always on display on the go uh, which of course the Realme 7 Pro supports. You can also expect really poppy vibrant colours as well which absolutely leap off the screen and smack you right in the chops. And of course you've got full customization over the display in the settings as well so you can play around with the likes of the colour temperature. You've got various screen modes to play with including the gentle mode for an sRGB style finish. That'll be good if you want more realistic hues for editing photos and the like. And it's a full HD plus resolution display 2400 by 1080 so 
even though it's a 6.4 inch, the visuals are nice and crisp. You have to really get in there close to notice any sort of pixelation at all. For a budget smartphone, you certainly get nice deep blacks and nice crisp whites. Uh, and of course, you can play around with the color temperature and the settings, as I mentioned before. And on that top brightness level, positively eye searing as well. No worries uh, with outdoor visibility or anything like that. And yes, you do have a wee selfie camera orifice down here in the corner, uh, but at least it's sort of wedged out of the way. It's quite small, so rather nondescript. Uh, but it will, of course, intrude slightly onto the visuals when you are going full screen for a bit of gaming action, a bit of movies, whatever. That is, unless you actually dive into the display sends and explicitly say that you do not want the app to show that front camera. And then even when you try to go full screen in the likes of Disney+, Plus, Netflix, whatever, what you'll get is a big fat black bar hiding that uh, selfie orifice from view. However, while you do have that gorgeous OLED display here on the Realme 7 Pro, there is one little sacrifice you'll have to make in order to get it, and that is there is no 90 hertz refresh rate support here on the Pro model. Uh, so of course the Realme 6 before it and the 6 Pro, they both support a 90 hertz. It's only 60 here on the Pro version of the 7 series. And another feature that you'll find here on the Realme 7 Pro that you'll find on bugger all other budget smartphones is the in-display fingerprint sensor tucked away here at the bottom. Touch wood seems to work an absolute charm so far. And that's complemented by a good bit of face unlock here on the Realme 7 Pro as well. So just tap that power button, it'll scan for your face and as you can see, boom, straight in there, no hanging about. Realme always manages to nail the audio on its budget smartphones as well. And once again here on the Realme 7 Pro, you've got a stereo speaker output. Uh, it's not both front facings, either you've basically got the earpiece and then you've got this uh, downward firing effort right here. But let's just bump it up to maximum volume and see what you get. Anything you want to chat about, about the big sexy tech launches this week or just life in general and how badly it sucks. And yeah, you know what? Again, for a budget blower, nice and powerful. So on that top volume, you'll get some really meaty sound. Uh, certainly, certainly doesn't sound tinny or anything like that. and should be clearly audible even in a very noisy environment. Jump on into the audio settings and you'll find you've got full Dolby Atmos support on here as well. As usual, with full automatic tweaking, uh, depending on what you're actually doing, watching a movie, playing a game, whatever. As usual, usual with Realme smartphones you've got a headphone jack on here as well so you can get plugs in otherwise you've got full Bluetooth 5.1 support you've got support for high-res audio all the good stuff so I'll definitely be getting some music downloaded get that uh, fully tested out now you may have noticed so far that the specs are actually pretty similar here on the Realme 7 Pro as they are to the Oppo Reno 4. Of course, Realme and Oppo are quite closely aligned, uh, owned basically by the same sort of umbrella company. And like the Reno, you've once again got the Snapdragon 720G chipset packed in here, providing that performance. Uh, so not quite as impressive as the likes of the Poco X3 NFC, which is powered by the 732G. But all the same, everyday performance should be nice and smooth. You should be able to get gaming on the likes of Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile on those high detail settings. As you can see the Realme 7 Pro benchmarks rather respectably as well and that's all helped along by the fact that you've got either 6 or 8 gigs around this is the 8 gig model so plenty of memory stuffed in there but of course I will be doing a full gaming test with the Realme 7 Pro for my in-depth review so stay tuned for that and another area where I'm expecting good things from the Realme 7 Pro is the battery life as well you've got a mighty 4500 milliamp cell stuffed in here not quite as impressive as some rivals like again the Poco X3 NFC but still it should easily carry through a full day of use uh, without having a resort to the power saving modes helped along by that energy efficient 720g chipset and as i mentioned before you've got that 65 watt super dart charge tech on board as well so you should get a full charge for that 4500 milliamp cell in about 34 minutes and it's great to see you actually get the adapter bundled in the box you don't have to stump up extra cash for that now let's finish up this realme 7 pro unboxing with a squint of that quad lens rear camera and actually it doesn't jut too far from the surface as well it's a fairly inconspicuous bit of camera chassis action what you've got here is a 64 megapixel lens using Sony's IMX682 sensor and that's backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and then the last two are basically a 2 megapixel macro lens Ugh and a two megapixel mono lens. Now that 64 megapixel shooter will actually snap at 16 megapixel uh, pictures by default, uh, just using the four in one pixel binning, which helps out in sort of tricky HDR situations, just helps to brighten up low light shots, things like that. Uh, but you can flick to full on 64 megapixel mode if you fancy packing in a bit more detail. You've got all the usual features on here, such as an AI mode, a bit dazzle color. So as you can see, that just really brightens up things, really makes those colors pop. Uh, but if you prefer more natural photo, then definitely leave that knocked off of course you've got your hdr auto smarts if you want to swap between the primary 64 megapixel lens and the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle just quick tap of those icons like so nice and easy uh, and then you can of course dive into the digital zoom 
the quick tap up here because of course there's no optical zoom on board. And you've got all the standard bonus modes on here like the good old portrait mode to add a bokeh style effect in the background. Of course you've got your night mode uh, which can take several different photos at different exposure levels, melt them all together for a brighter overall result. And it looks like you've got full on pro controls for this night mode as well. So if you want to mess around with the ISO levels, the shutter speed and everything to get a very precise kind of result, you can do that. And there's also a full on pro mode right here in the rest of the bonus settings along with the usual stuff like time lapse, uh, ultra macro of course. And when you want to shoot a nice bit of home movie action, you can shoot full HD resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second, otherwise get involved with a good bit of 4K. Uh, you got your ultra steady mode if you want to uh, do a good bit of running about, jumping bit of parkour action while you shoot, uh, but that tops off at full HD. And then last up, if we flip around to that 32 megapixel front facing camera, this should be uh, absolutely fine again for your bit of Instagram's actions and all of that. You got your portrait mode. If you want to blur out the background, really uh, emphasize your gorgeous mug. And once again, for anyone who's uh, constantly asking me why I'm not really on Instagram, why well, I present evidence A. So that right there in a nutshell is the Realme 7 Pro's hardware and software but of course as I say stay tuned for my in-depth review of this bad boy my sim is already stuffed inside so I'll be using it as my full personal handset for about a week or so. But it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Realme 7 Pro down below. I've also got the Realme 7 the standard version right here so I'm going to do that full unboxing that should be going live at the same time as this and a comparison of the two side by side so you can see which one might be best for you. And for more than the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers everyone, love you!